What's up, Cougars? I'm Nadia Hunini, and I'm here with Adrian Lagayon and Michael Fang of the Esports Club. Thank you guys so much for being here. Okay. We're going to be talking about the Esports Club, what they're all about, and the legacy that these two club officers hope to leave at CSUSM. All right, guys, so you guys started back in 2017, 2019. You were both from different clubs at Anime, Gaming Club, and the League of Legends Club. Talk to me about how Esports came about. Sure, uh, I'll start off. Um, so the League of Legends Club was created in 2017. Uh, that was actually when I joined in for the first time. I was a freshman, and it was a group of about 12-ish people. And I mean, we weren't really playing competitively. It was more of like a social hangout where people who played League um, came together and we went to like little events, we had little watch parties and so on. But our president, his name was Steven, um, he actually transferred to UCR and I ended up taking a uh, leadership for the club. And that's when I actually wanted to be more competitive and actually have players play in like esports for League of Legends. And so at 2018, um, that's when I actually formed the League of Legends team. Okay. And so from there, that's where we have Michael coming in. Yeah, so as far as I'm aware, the Anime and Gaming Club has existed like long before I've ever been a student. But from the history that I've been told, around 2018 is when they started doing some esports stuff on the side and having some teams playing a couple of leagues across the nation. But when I became a student in 2019, I was just a normal, I was just like a freshman. Uh, we started reaching out more, we started like to compete in more leagues and started winning stuff. And that kind of brings us to 2019, when the pandemic obviously happened. Uh, one of the officers from the Anime Gaming Club decided to start an esports team, or start an esports club, and, and got me involved. And so we kind of transferred all the Anime Gaming Club's esports stuff over to the esports club. And that's where also Adrian reached out to us, and we also got the League of Legends club involved. Because uh, as far as I'm aware, the clubs have been very closely intertwined like since the beginning. Yeah, I mean, we both kind of like, well, not Michael, but me and the president for uh, Anime Gaming. We like talked with each other. I mean, I still kept League just separate just because he was different from anime and gaming. But when that pandemic hit, that's when we kind of got more incorporated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it looks like the, the pandemic had some good effect on the eSports club then. Oh yeah. Awesome, oh, yeah. awesome. So the eSports club is probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest sports club on campus. Talk to me about how many people you guys have in the club, how the club is organized, the different games you play, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You know? uh, so this semester we're currently at our biggest. I believe we are, are at about 57 players, I want to say. 57, yeah. Yeah, with, I don't even know how many teams, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> it's about eight, but with two of them having more than one. I think okay. Valorant has three teams, Rocket League has two. Okay. Okay, and then where does your club primarily meet? We're here at the Inspiration Studios, um, but of course, it's a big club, lots of different games. Where do the players play? For So there's two types of, uh, I, I would say, like competitive scenes. We have the FGC scene and then just more of the PC scene. Mm -hmm. uh, for PCs, that's where we have League of Legends, Valorant. Rocket League is kind of like interchangeable. I mean, some pe people play on the console, some people play on PC. But then everything else for the FGC community, they play on... Right. They primarily play on uh, PS4s in person, so we, yeah, they, it, so it's a bit of a different environment, so we try to prioritize having them meet up in person, whereas our more PC-based teams, uh, they're totally fine just meeting up like through d online, through like Discord, and just mm -hmm. playing their games that way. Because mm -hmm. we don't really have the supplies to have like an in-person um, esports area, so we kind of just have players play on their own setups. Um, there is a local gaming uh, cafe, but it's all the way in Oceanside. Mm -hmm. I mean, one or two players kind of go there just as an emergency um, in case their PCs don't work in the uh, the dorms. Mm -hmm. But other than that, everyone just plays at home. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. You guys have some pretty cool jerseys on. Talk to me about the companies that have been able to sponsor you guys. I know when we met before, you guys were showing me unboxing all of the amazing equipment you got. Talk to me about the companies that sponsor you guys and how that process kind of happens. Sure. Uh, do you want to go first? Yeah, so uh, our club is like, we've, we've been getting, we've been running events for as long as like this club's existed. It was actually the first thing we did as a club. And for these events, we usually reach out to a lot of companies to help like sponsor us with like prizes and stuff. Uh, so some of the stuff we've received is like we've re re we've reached out to companies like the uh, 
What are they called? The uh, Gamdia's Gamdia. Hyper X. Hyper X is one of them. Um, Razor, mm-hmm. and then a Corsair. Corsair has helped us out in the past. We've also these are these, we've from the, all these companies we've received stuff like gaming products, like headsets, and mouse or mice, mouse pads. We also we've also talked to companies like the Key Company, which provides us with like keycaps for custom keyboards, as well as Ultra Tokyo. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're a anime. They're like an anime figure company. Yeah, they okay. just gave us like a lot of uh, stuff for for our events. We okay. don't keep them. It's just um, primarily for giveaways. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And I know you guys are hoping for hopefully sometime in the future, even if that's when you guys are going to be graduated by then, a, a gaming room. So correct me with the right terminology <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, what no that worries. would look like. I know that's a whole process. Whoever is in charge of that um, CSUSM get on it because <laughs> they definitely need it and they could use it for sure. I mean, so it's, um, we call it an esports or, or arena. Arena, yes. Um, I mean, game room, uh, gaming setup, either one. Um, so the area that we're in is the Inspiration Studio. This is actually the first time we've actually had something in person. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mainly for the FGC community, the fighting game community, just cause it's easier for them to move everything. Whereas the PC ones, they have, for us, like we have giant cons, or not cons, the giant PCs with like high specs, and it's like it's just a hassle to move them. Especially, that's just only one part. We have that keyboards, mouses, monitors, and so that's why we tend to play out uh, at our own setups. Okay. But for an esports arena, what we're trying to hope for is actually like dedicated PCs um, and monitors for our players. And it'd be more kind of game, gamey looking, looking like, uh, mm-hmm. like neon lights. Um, it's all about the aesthetic, oh, right? Absolutely, absolutely, right, Michael? It's <laughs> all about those aesthetics. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, just making it as professional as possible for our players. Because, I mean, yeah, we have online, but it's a different experience when you're actually playing next to your teammates mm-hmm. versus, hey, I'm on Discord. When are you getting on? Right, absolutely. Perfect. Perfect segue to my next question. Talk to me about that being in that headspace of, you know, maybe you're playing an individual game, but having your teammates there. Talk to me about what that aspect is like and how that really impacts how you perform in a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, we have two different aspects. The FGC, um, which they're more solo, mm-hmm. whereas the PC ones, they are played in team base. League is a 5v5, Rocket League is 3v3, Valorant is 5v5. I think CSGO I didn't mention. Um, they're also 4v4? 5v5. 5v5, thank you. <laughs> um, like when you're next to your teammate, it's just you just have that communication. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the same thing on Discord, but I don't know. Just seeing your teammate next to you and actually competing, it just it makes a different environment. For me, mm-hmm. League of Legends, um, it's a really popular game, and it's 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 really tough. Like mm-hmm. having to communicate with your team on things you have to do, like getting objectives, making sure you're making the right plays. Um, we haven't really played in person, but you know, online, like definitely, it's kind of in there. If it was in person, definitely would be way better. Okay, but. and that's where the arena comes in, right? Oh yeah. I don't know how FGC is. I mean, so for the FGC guys, most of the teamwork is done outside of the game because when you're in game, it's just you and your opponent and nobody else. But a lot of the teamwork is done outside where you guys are like helping each other learn what you guys are doing wrong or just playing with each other or just exposing like holes in your game plan. But even like as a team, once you're in game, you still feel that team aspect because everyone is there watching you, cheering you on, and it's just really fun. And it's something that kind of you miss when you're online because normally when you go online and it's your turn to play, everyone kind of just quiets up so like you can uh, focus. Okay. And would you, just depending on the type of players that you guys are, do you like that loud aspect? Oh, and I love it. Absolutely. I, li- okay. I thrive off of it. <laughs> Michael is known in the FGC community. I'm, I just, I'm more vocal. Okay. So I would say I'm a more emotional kind of like... Uh, player Mm -hmm. like whenever things happen like I am there to support my teammates and I will be vocal to tell them like you did a good Mm -hmm. job or like you know those little hype things you're like let's go yeah stuff like that oh I love it I love it and that's both like in comms correct me if I'm wrong with the lingo so that's comms with the microphone and in the chat as well yeah well uh, chat we had to say a little 
a little back because um, okay. uh, leagues are very like strict with people talking just because they don't want they want it to be a like, more more positive atmosphere. Okay. But comms, yeah, definitely that. Okay, <laughs> love that, love that. Um, I guess I also segues to the next question. That's something like a personal question that I have. How does because I think, some, would you say like the culture of gaming, is it more of a positive thing? I know it can be pretty, you know, toxic. Guys don't re aren't really face to face. They can really say whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about like the, the culture of gaming. So me and Michael have a very, very strict rule mm -hmm. at our club. Like we make sure that all our, our players sign a, I guess a contract regarding our uh, constitution mm -hmm. um, saying that they've read it and that they're gonna follow the pseudo code of conduct. Gaming world is very. I think it's a it's a very mixed bag to be completely honest. Uh, with with when you're like with your friends and like with people you know, it can be a very positive, uplifting environment. It's great and I love it. But as soon as like you hop online and it's a bunch of faceless mobs, I guess, mm -hmm. it can it, it things can just become downright harmful, toxic, mm -hmm. just not a very like fun or good place to be in. Yeah, and I know like one of the stereotypes is Call of Duty, like back yeah. in what 2014 2015 where black ops 2 was a thing that was a time of age where people and comms would just say whatever they yeah. want and so yeah. that's why we're really strict on this and we make sure that our students are following um our code of conduct because mm -hmm. we don't want our club to have a bad reputation mm -hmm. especially if a player was like banned like that would yeah. look bad on us mm -hmm. and so okay wow that's amazing and i feel like that's something like an extra layer that you guys have to enforce as club officers that maybe you know typical on field or on court sports where the players are in face to face they don't really have that kind of shield to protect them behind like a screen yeah um our penny uh they're our advisor uh penny just hammers it down whenever mm -hmm. it goes uh, comes to this just because uh penny really she Penny is a really big advocate for esports, mm -hmm. and um, they really just want to make sure that everything's just set. Okay, I love that. I love that. I love the positive environment. And it sounds like with the different games that you guys have, you are able to accommodate as many players that are hoping to come in and try out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of depends on what yeah. game there okay. is. Okay. Okay. And on that aspect of trying out, talk to me about how people who are interested after seeing this interview or didn't even know that esports was a thing here on campus, how can they join in the future? Yeah. So we normally hold tryouts at the beginning of every semester. Uh, we usually announce them through our Discord and through social media what games are happening and when. Uh, normally when it's like it, it is time for the tryouts we reach out to our team captains for each individual game to like sort through all the players and just see like not necessarily who's the best player mm -hmm. but who like fits the who fits the most within the team who has like who is like gives like who has like the best feel about them like who who do you think won't like Call, frankly, frankly, who do you think won't call the opposing team mean names when you guys lose? Wow, okay, so that's a big part of that is just the screening process then. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a big process and whenever we have, so fall is when we have like the big impl uh, income students because we have freshmen who are coming in, returning players, and then spring is, tends to be where the players who are cut mm -hmm. come back. Um, when we try to add new games, like me and Michael have been working um, in the summer, like June, to set up new branches mm -hmm. um, for this semester. And the new ones we opened up was Tekken, Guilty Gear, CSGO, another Valorant team. And am I missing any more? Oh, and another Rocket League team. Yeah. And so, like Michael said, like we screen them out and we also look for student leaders who can run their team. Cause it's, it's kind of, so we're a sports club within a club. Okay. Cause we have the sports club aspect and then we have the teams where we have to manage, but that's where the team captains come in mm -hmm. to help us out, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So there's a whole different structure just outside of you guys that helps you guys basically to manage all the people that are in your that are in your organization, because I think it's, frankly, it's hard probably just for two people to manage all 57 of the guys in the club. When it happened, when we first started, what, we had 24 people? We had like, yeah, when we first started, there was only tw there was 24 guys and it was just the two of us and it was like incredibly stressful for us to run. Like yeah. we micromanaged every little part, <laughs> which, I mean, we weren't trying to be one of those power holders. Like we just yeah. wanted to make sure the club was Yeah, set. understandable. And, like, we didn't really have an infrastructure. Like it was just, hey, can you make it to practice? You have a game this week, and it was a little messy. But me and, me and Michael, it's it's what two years? It's been like 
two years of doing this now. Wow. Uh, we've started, we've like, we've obviously grown a lot, both as people and just as a club. We've like, we've reached out to a lot of our teams. They've like formulated, they've like nominated team captains and they're the ones like managing their clubs, reporting back to us. And whenever things get like too serious, like too big of an issue for like team captains to handle, they reach up to, they reach up to us and we can like come down. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. You guys are truly a dynamic <laughs> duo. And you guys have created something so special here in the esports community, whether that just be growing the community of gaming as a whole here on campus. So where do you see the esports club growing and what legacy do you guys hope to leave here on campus? For me, I've just had a passion for esports. Um, when I was a sophomore, um, I mean, I used to play basketball, but things happen. I just didn't really like playing that. But someone introduced me to League of Legends, and it was around this time actually. Um, so this thing called Worlds, it's like the like what the Grand Championship for esports in League of Legends. Um, and like when I felt when I saw that, like I just fell in love with esports and the game in general. And that's when I wanted to do something in that kind of field. And when I came here, I mean. Didn't really start it until like 2018, but it just continued ramping up and I just want this kind of thing to stay alive mm -hmm. even when I'm gone. Because there's probably there's probably a gonna be an incoming freshman who has the same passion. And who knows, maybe they'll be the next leader of the club, or maybe they'll be the one leading what, a League of Legends team, a Tekken team, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have any like big grand <laughs> ambitions for esports. I'll be completely honest. My goal has been the same since day one. I just want to leave behind a place where anyone can come in and be like, hey, I'm interested in this game. Does anyone else play this? And they can find someone else to play it with them. Mm -hmm. oh, I love that. I love that. Well, guys, is there anything else that you feel like you wanted to include or something that I may have missed that you want um, the Cougar community to know about esports? Yeah, I mean, we're not just in esports club, mm -hmm. um, we have two aspects. I mean, we have the social one and then we have the competitive one. Okay. I know it seems like we only care about the competitive side, but at the end of the day, we're a gaming club as well. And we want to make sure that our community is being involved, whether it's joining our Twitch streams or joining our tournaments. Um, we want to make sure that everyone knows that we're trying to help out the gaming community. I mean, Michael's well known for the FTC. I mean, he also, what, you're setting up a little mini tournament for so like in, in houses, in okay. houses for just what, little fun 1v1s. Okay. In my case, doing the same thing for League, you know, not too serious. I mean, it's just more of just messing around, having fun and making new friends. That's awesome. So where can the Cougar community find you guys? Is there anything that you guys want to plug? Yes, okay. uh, they can catch us on Twitter, Instagram, on Twitch. Uh, am I missing any other ones? Uh, well, those are primarily our main social medias, but all, those should have a link to our Discord, which is where our the, our community primarily lives, as well as like, that's usually the first place where we'll make announcements. Okay, perfect. And then they can find you on Instagram as well? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we're, I mean, we try to respond to everyone. I mean, most of we've gotten through emails, but sometimes it gets lost and we feel bad when it, we find an email that's been there for like two weeks. Yeah. And so, hey, we're busy. Yeah. yeah just me and Michael. Just me and Michael. Oh, that's but. awesome. Well, thank you, Adrian and Michael, so much. This has been amazing. I'm so excited to get this out there and share what the eSports Club is really all about. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, guys. <laughs> This is only part of Let me look at this real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Finding game community. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. This is Lover. Nadia, this is actually one of our team captains. His name is Nick. Hey, uh, Nick. Hello. This is Hi, Nadia. Nice to meet you. Hi, Nadia. I'm Nick. So nice to meet you. Okay, we're going to. Uh, <laughs> great for the FGC. Oh, awesome. uh, Nadia, if you want, you can kind of move in a little closer. Awesome. Perfect. Everybody, smile here. There we go. We're going to do one real quick here. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> right, three, two, one. Do this. Three, two, one. Then I'll do one quick with this, and we will be out of your hair for you. This thing turned out awesome.